salvation for your salvation, and that is that you must change. The song says everything must change. Nothing stays the same. That's right. Everything about you and I must change. Why? The word of God says so. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things old, old, old have passed away. Passed away, y'all, ain't nothing more than a metaphor for saying died. You know how it is when some people die. We don't like to say the word die or death. We say they have passed away. Well, that's also supposed to happen with you and I. That old nature of ours is supposed to pass away. You and I should be mortifying the deeds of our flesh daily. And if you're doing that, you don't have to worry about the spirit yearning over you because then you are doing that what is pleasing in God's sight. And when you do that, guess what will happen? Psalms 8411b says he will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. If you're wondering why your prayers are not being answered, you ain't, you and I, we ain't walking uprightly before God. Oh my God, let me move on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, yeah, but he gives us, oh my God, yeah, the spirit whom, yeah, he has caused us, yeah, yeah. He has caused, he dwells us, yeah, with a jealous love, Lord have mercy. But he gives us more and more grace. He gives them more time, y'all. Power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. So that we can overcome that. That's why you need to understand. People need to understand this about salvation. Salvation is not instantaneous as soon as you do Romans 10, 9, and 10. You ain't just saved. The Bible says you will be saved. There's a process that you must go through. That's part of the sanctification um, that God has for us, that he set us apart. Romans, the sixth chapter, is known as the sanctification chapter. You need to read that. You need to understand that. You need to know what God is saying for you so that you can change and be transformed into holiness and righteousness. And know this, it will not be complete until he calls you and I home. Lord, have mercy. That is why he says God sets himself against the proud and the haughty, but gives grace continually to lowly those, those who are humble enough to receive it. That's why some of our prayers are not being answered, y'all. We got too many folks coming to God like they all that in a bag of chips. Lord have mercy. You need to understand. You need to reverence God. Fear him. Reverently fear him. Worship him. Why? He's God and he's God alone. He don't have nobody else. Acting, at, acting as God with him. Amen. It is he that has created us and not we ourselves. That person, that, that individual needs the, the highest respect. Amen. He's the creator. And Lord have mercy. Uh, 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 when you come to him all puffed up and proud about who you are, God, don't, God ain't no respect the persons. He ain't concerned about who you think you are because he knows you and I very well. The Bible says the very hairs on our head are numbered by him. And not only that, in Jeremiah 1, 5, this is what the word of God says. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That's how well God knows us. He knew us before we became us. What he knows of us is that internal part of us. Because man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the inward appearance. The heart. Because he knows the heart of man. He knows us intimately because he created us. He has predestined that what you and I are to become. You didn't get to where you got to because if you, if you gain a measure of success, don't, don't walk around there thumping yourself on the chest and talking about what you did and how you accomplished that. You didn't do that on your own. God predestined for that to happen for you. And understand this. He predestined it to happen for you whether you are saved or unsaved. He is Lord of Lords. King of Kings. He's sovereign over everything. The good, the bad, the indifferent, uh, 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 the evil, everything. God is Lord and sovereign over y'all. He has predestined everything that happens in this life that we encounter has already been predestined by God to happen. We don't, nothing happens to us on its own, y'all. Y'all need to know that. Amen. And I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Yeah. But so be subject to God. 
Resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Now, now understand this. It, it, it's, it's right what the word of God says that, to resist the devil because he is the adversary. and He's walking to and fro on the earth, seeking whom he may devour. But there's some other thing, there's some, something else that you've got to resist as well. And that is your own, your own internal inclination to do the, what is contrary to the will of God. That would be your flesh. Because the greatest enemy that you and I have is not the devil or anybody else that we know as a known foe, but is that, that flesh of ours. You, me, I am my own worst enemy. You are your own worst enemy. Because there's no good thing that dwells in your flesh. And why? The Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful in all his ways. Uh, uh, that's Jeremiah 17, 9. Wicked and desperately and mortally sick. Who can know that thing? But I, the Lord, I try the reins of the heart to see what the motives are. And then I'm going to reward you according to uh, uh, the motives of your heart. So that what am I trying to tell you, y'all? We have got to mortify the deeds of this flesh. That's the thing that you need to resist. You got to resist your own self, your own tendencies to go back to doing the things that you used to do. Go back to the things that you're comfortable with doing. Go back to doing that thing that made you feel good. Uh-huh. Yeah, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Now understand this. When we say you are sinners, we ain't talking about your practice in sin. Because there's a, uh, there's, a, there's a phrase that people, uh, in, oh my God, in the body of Christ. I am a sinner saved by grace. Really? 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 Do you not understand that in the English vernacular, when you say I am, that's present tense. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things old have passed away and all things have become new. So how can you, being a new creation, still be calling yourself as I am a sinner saved by grace? No, understand this. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if you are still a sinner, you are not a saint. Uh-huh. Because in order to be a sinner, that means that you're doing something every day, y'all. You're practicing sin. Just like they practice law and, and, and medical professionals and practitioners are in the practice of medicine. We have to pra we practice being sinners each and every day. When you go to Romans, the sixth chapter, like I told you before, the sanctification chapter, it will tell you that not only what, what you need to do is those members that you've yielded, submitted, and surrendered over to lawlessness and sin, yield them very same members. Submit, surrender, and yield those members over to to righteousness and holiness. And in order to do that, God says that you have to do this habitually. That's practicing, y'all. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Get your solicit hands, I mean your solicit, get your soiled hands clean. And how do you do that? Repent, repent. Confess your sins. Realize that you have been disloyal, wavering individual with divided interests and purify your hearts of your spiritual adultery. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. De King David. King David was in adultery one time. Amen. And you know what he said? <laughs> Created me a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within me. Psalm 51. Once his sin was found out, once he found out that he was in a sinful state because the prophet Nathan had to come to him and give him a parable, y'all, to get David to open up his spiritual eyes to see where he had erred because King David saw no wrong in what he did. Why is that? I'm the king. It's good to be the king. Whatever the king says, the king goes. If I say I want that woman, bring me that woman. If I say I want that, if I, I'm going, I don't care if she's married or whatever. I am the king. I am the law of the land. Well, but there's a greater law, y'all. Mm -hmm. We can have the law of the land, and we do in the, these United States of America. We have the, the laws of the land known as our Constitution. Oh, my God. And, yeah, and then we change the laws from time to time by way of Congress. Amen. Congress is the one that write the laws. The Supreme Courts write the decisions about the law. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there's a greater law than that, y'all. And I know people say, well, Minister Wesley, wait a minute. What are you getting ready to say? We ain't under the law no more because we're under grace. Yeah, we're not under the Mosaic laws, but we absolutely are under the laws of God. Jesus Christ said this, if you love me, obey my commandments and follow my instructions. Uh-huh, I can't make it no more plainer than that. And if you do that, your prayers will get answered. I'm going to go on. I'm almost done. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come close to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did that. As you draw near to God... Be deeply penitent and grieved. That's right. Come with him with a contrite heart. Don't come to him with a river of tears. 
You know, some people ain't got no problem. They can cry on cue. Lord have mercy. They can drop a bucket full of tears on cue. And ain't got no meaning behind it. They can just cry. Don't you know God is familiar with that? The Hebrew people, Lord have mercy, the Hebrew people have this custom, y'all. When, when, when they are in mourning, um, they, 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 they just don't mourn on their own. They bring forth a group of people who are nothing but professional mourners. They wail and travail. Oh, and kill y'all. They ain't got no assist association with the dead person, that the person that has died. They're there to perform a service. And many of us can cry just like that. There ain't no meaning behind it. And God is not, he's not fooled by some meaningless tears. Be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. He is not boo-boo the fool. You shall reap what you have sown. So when you come to him, you had better come to him. Amen. With, with a deeply penitent and grieve, even weep over your disloyalty. Oh, my God. Let your laughter be turned to grief and your mirth to dejection and heartfelt shame for your sins. Be serious about why you come to God. Don't be coming to him and half heartedly and just, oh, huh, you know, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You had better be real about that situation that you found yourself in. You need to be repentant of your with godless sorrow. Lord have mercy. Humble yourself, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will lift you up and make your lives significant. That's right. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. The Apostle Paul said, it's in him that I live and have my very being. My brethren, do not speak evil about, oh boy, here we go, or accuse one another. He that maligns a brother or judges his brother is maligning and criticizing the law and judging the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a practicer of the law, but a censor and a judge of it. God ain't give us that right. Uh, to judge somebody that, that in, in, a condemn, in a condemnation uh, uh, form, y'all. Uh, we can judge the household of faith because we have to judge what is right is wrong within the house. But you can't go outside the house condemning people. One only is the lawgiver and judge who is able to save and destroy the one who has the absolute power of life and death. That's Jesus Christ. But the Bible says when God the Father raised him from the dead, he raised him from the dead and, and he now sits, hand on, sits on the right hand of the Father and he was given all power in heaven and earth is in his hand. Amen. He has that power because God bestowed it upon the Son. Yeah, here we go. And, but you, who are you, who are you that presume to pass judgment on your neighbor? Lord have mercy. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a city and spend the year there and carry on our business and make money. Oh boy, let me read that again. Let me read that again. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a city and spend the year there and carry on our business and make money. That's putting the cart before the horse. Um, amen. That's putting the cart before the horse. That's why Matthew 6.33 comes into effect. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And first off, before you even go there, trust in the Lord with all your heart, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. In all of your ways. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Before you go off, off hopping off on a hot new business venture, you had better sought the Lord and made sure that that's what he has purpose for your life because if it is not in the plans of God for you guess what it won't work okay I'm moving on yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow for what is the nature of your life you are really but a wisp of vapor a puff of smoke a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air. From dust we came and for dust we shall return. But God is a holy God and he's from everlasting to everlasting. Who are we? You ought, you ought instead to say, if the Lord is willing. That's where people are messing up in their prayers when they go praying before God. Instead of them saying, if the Lord wills, he has to be respected, y'all. He had to be reverenced. Uh, you ought to, yeah, you ought instead to say, no, I think I read that. Yeah. But as it is, you boast falsely in your presumption and your self-conceit. All such boasting is wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So any person who knows what is right to do but does not do it to him, it is a sin. I'm, I'm, I said I was gonna, there was a verse that I was going to refer about fornicating. Amen. For the believers, the Bible is very clear. 
outside of marriage, there is no sex. And the word of God is saying this. If to any, so any person who knows what is right to do, but does not do it, to him it is sin.